Hello and welcome to A Way of Life, a Koi Golf podcast. A podcast aimed at exploring the wonderful world of golf. We'll be interviewing everyone from weekend golfers up to club professionals, with the aim of understanding what keeps us coming back week after week, hitting that little ball in that big field. On the first episode of A Way of Life, we explore custom club fitting. Custom club fitting is a world not known to many of us, so we wanted to explore why we should be getting club fittings, why we shouldn't be getting club fittings. We spoke to Ross at EP Golf Studios, who was on hand to help us understand the world in a bit more detail. So sit back, listen up, and hope you enjoy the episode. So thank you. I am Tom Dyer, owner of Koi Golf, and I have with me... I'm Ross Walker, um, owner of Elite Performance Golf Studios. Thank you. And uh, obviously we were talking a bit before we sat down and got this all set up. Um, so I've known a bit about your story already. Yeah. Um, but let's hear about why you started Elite Performance Studios and yeah, your journey that you've been on. We'll go through in a bit. Yes. Uh, why did we start it? I, funny enough, I actually did a video not long ago on just like what is custom fitting where yeah, I kind okay. of touched on this yeah, uh, nice. on a YouTube video. We can link that. We can link that. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and I guess I think there's a lacking area in the custom fit kind of world still where you get your, your kind of pro shop kind of and your more lower level custom fit, should we say, where you have a couple of options and it's big national retailer. Yeah. Yeah. It's not, not kind of great and you don't get the, the, the service and then you'll have your, your much more higher end kind of custom fits where you're going to go, you're going to pay a premium for the fit and you're going to pay a premium for the really expensive shafts, which not every weekend golfer needs or yeah, wants, yeah. To, wants to spend on. So that's kind of, that was the whole idea. Like literally, Good quality custom fit in, affordable for like every golfer at every level with whatever your budget. Um, yeah, just provide a really good service to just help people and make sure they got the right kit to to play better golf, really. Yeah, nice. And the, the setup here is great. Like it's uh I walked in, I was like, wow, yeah, like nice, nice gaff. <laughs> yeah, for a shed. <laughs> You're under it, it's a barn. At it least a barn. barn. It's, yeah. it's not a shed, it's a barn. Um, but yeah, even that like is, is part of, of the journey of any business that you're going for yourself was so hard finding a place to, yeah, to yeah. set up, um, to be able to do it. it. took months and months and months of hard work, but we made it look all right. I think we made it look all right. Yeah, no, I think it's a great place. The, um, it's a lovely setting. The, uh, obviously custom fitting world is one that's probably not known by a lot of like weekend golfers that you, you referenced. Yeah. Um, why would you say like a benefit to a weekend goal for coming in and, and seeing yourselves like what are they going to get out of parting with their hard-earned dollars so well again another thing that we want to really push as part of the experience is not just fit in yeah, yeah. like so if you don't have lessons you're going to come you're going to learn everything about your swing why everything happens there's still a lot of basic basic stuff that the weekend golfer doesn't know like I'm I'm slicing it. I'm hitting it right. I'm like, well, the club face is just opening yeah. impact. So like, we we just Guilty. sort that out with yeah. a little, yeah, little little tweak, you know. And they're like, wow, that's amazing. Even little tips like that, honestly, can make a huge difference. Even custom fitting aside, so you'll pick up a lot of tips. Yeah. A lot of people have messaged me afterwards and gone, Jesus, Jesus, that that like little thing you said has just like changed my whole game. I'm yeah, like, yeah. Sweet, cool. Um, Obviously, optimizing numbers is one thing. Optimizing distance, optimizing ball flight, optimizing control, reducing miss, and then another massive one I think is just like the confidence, like yeah. placebo. Yeah, yeah. Having knowing it's in your, right. Yeah, hundred percent. Having the club in your hand that feels right, looks right, gives you the confidence to make a good swing. You know, we've, we've all had that feeling where you just stand on a tee and you're like, "Yeah, this is just going to be a good shot." Yeah. Like and normally it is, and you also vice versa. You're like this is going to be shocking. <laughs> like, no confidence. So. Just having the right stuff in your hand, I think, makes such a such a big difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've uh, we were just saying I've had good and bad club fitting experiences, and um, yeah, yeah. Knowing the good ones that you've got in your bag, like you just feel. I don't know if it is that placebo or if it is the right club, but the combination 100%. of the two, right, is why you definitely. And how much um, would you say of club fitting is the science and the numbers versus just the comfortableness of someone like getting the right equipment? I think that comes down to the fitter as well yeah so for me i'm quite a feel-based player that so i want to come here from every angle like i want to get the numbers right some people it doesn't really matter if i give them like a spade or like a sledge out like do you know what i mean like yeah, they yeah, won't yeah. feel much different so in that in that case it's just really working on numbers some people yeah. react to like the slightest things and the feel like oh, that feels horrendous that feels great so it really is just about figuring out the person in the fit in just making sure you're talking through every every variable like i've known some fitters that don't even touch on feel 
which for me is just like insane yeah, because yeah, yeah. for me like going from a, with a driver for example like going from a, a heavy swing weight to a light swing weight makes like a huge difference to me yeah, yeah my sure. miss and strike and everything um so yeah it's just again making sure you're in depth enough talk through everything um and just make sure it's as you get in what's what's right for them really yeah nice and you mentioned there like the like difference between giving someone a sledgehammer and a, a spade they might not know the difference or someone like might know the difference in like a cotton gram weight or something yeah yeah yeah, shaft. yeah yeah do you find that is more with like a a more advanced handicapper like your single digit handicappers or a higher handicapper or mm. neither it's just that is the person yeah not really i don't think there's i think if you are a, a better player you've been exposed to more equipment yeah okay so you've, yeah. you've tested more whereas if if you're kind of off 25 and it's your first set of clubs and you've never hit another club then yeah. it, it is going to be a little bit harder but not necessarily cause i think it's just inbuilt in people sometimes you pick them up and go oh, geez that feels heavy or yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or not and yeah everyone's slightly different so yeah ability a little bit but i think it's just more personal nice and the the most satisfying thing for you as a club fitter is it that person texting you afterwards is it like getting an extra 10 yards on the foresight monitor or like why i guess why do you do club fitting right i guess well the most satisfying moment i mean it, it is all satisfying when you get the messages going you know, just like one club champs or whatever or my yeah, handicaps yeah. come down four shots or whatever but i think in a fitting it's if we're working on kind of a trying to get the right club and then pair it up with kind of maybe a little tweak or a little concept yeah, yeah. To, to kind of get the outcome that we want because sometimes especially in driver fits it's trying to pair the right club up with the right concept yeah because everyone just goes i just want to hit it straight and i'm like great but you won't yeah, yeah like you won't do that you're better off trying to either hit a push hit a pull yeah hit a fade hit a draw because at least Have then you stock shot yeah yeah you at least then you've got a concept to commit to um so if we're working on a field and get the right club and then it just kind of clicks and you can see it yeah and all of a sudden like the the swing's better the strike's better the numbers are better and it's just like the thing that i'm telling them to do just clicks and it's yeah, just yeah. like wow yeah that's amazing and just yeah when it definitely takes a while yeah i'll be honest like in some <laughs> fittings i can't help myself my old boss didn't really love me doing it too yeah, much yeah. like try and talk about swing um but i can't help it it's hard because if you are a higher handicap you're maybe not as skillful in manipulating the club naturally right yeah, <laughs> yeah um but it, it can standing here watching people top balls thin balls shank balls sometimes yeah. is not not the most pleasant <laughs> but as you go it's gonna be fine don't worry work through it keep doing it keep that feel keep that feel yeah, keep that yeah. feel sometimes it's gonna be half an hour of just crap and frustrating for them and horrible for me and then it just clicks, clicks and like yeah. that's it you got it like that is it um just going through that sometimes <laughs> and the like because i'm toying with it now right like do i get lessons then go for a fitting do i get yeah. a fitting then go for a lesson like you were saying there right like if you stand here and you're topping balls for 30 minutes like you're trying not to say you're coming under it or you're going too steep over it right yeah. or like how's because me personally i'm thinking right i need to get some lessons and then I yeah. need to go for a club fitting, but I don't know if that's the right way to think about it or is there no perfect way of doing it? Like, Yeah, I don't think there is a perfect way. If you're just an average amateur weekend golfer. Which I am very much guilty yeah. of. <laughs> it, it is hard to know. Yeah. Um, so I guess it depends how much you're struggling. Yeah, yeah. I do get a lot of people in here that are struggling a lot. If you're struggling a lot, like I cannot hit this driver for toffee yeah. everywhere, strikes everywhere. It's likely probably not the club. Yeah. Like we could maybe get some of that helps a bit, but you're better off having lessons. Yeah, yeah. So if you're really struggling and you're thinking a full rebuild kind of need a lot of work, lessons. Yeah. Like if you're thinking maybe minor tweak kind of stuff, like you're in a reasonably good place, then fit in. And what, like, I guess at what point when you go on that lesson journey, right? And you're like five lessons deep. Yeah. Like then you're like, right now I actually feel a bit more comfortable in my swing at that point do you i guess is it the person feeling more comfortable within their swing the driver might be doing if they're trying to work with a fade then it's not going on to the other fairways it is just a bit more fade at that point would you say yeah like come in then we'll try and work on shot shape get you extra distance or manipulate yeah. it a bit more at that point would you say come in yeah definitely and i i think it's the industry is getting better on a, as a whole yeah. i think within fitting and coaching so if you're working with a coach hopefully he has enough knowledge of yeah yeah kit as well to go actually do you know what 
that equipment probably isn't helping what we're trying to do or is hindering you. Yeah. So let's look to make that change. Or even if you come in and see me, like, yeah, it will cost a fitting fee, but I will we'll go through all the numbers. We can discuss what you're working on. And I can say, look, actually, yeah. I think that's probably good for the minute. Don't worry about it. Keep working on it for three months, six months, whatever. And then come back and see me then. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. The, um, yeah, golf club industry is mental, right? How much, like, lessons to you guys, right? I guess they need to work together to be able to they do yes they do um and it's a very it's a very interesting dynamic i guess because i didn't i specifically didn't go into coaching yeah yeah although i think i would be an okay coach <laughs> <laughs> but i didn't because i kind of referenced it to a pt a little bit yeah yeah yeah. like people want to do it but don't really want to put in the work yeah okay do you know what I mean? Yeah, you yeah, get yeah. that. And like, like people kind of, they go for a lesson because it's going badly <laughs> yeah, and yeah. kind of expect it to be fixed. Whereas generally it gets worse before it gets better and you've got yeah, to work yeah, through yeah. that. Because most people I see, like they don't have time to go to the range. Um, Yeah. So exactly. you're a bit like, there needs to be almost two levels of coaching in my opinion, like tweaks, which is kind of what I would say that we do in here. Okay. You're hitting it right. I can stop you hitting it right almost instantly. Yeah. I'm not saying that's going to make you a more consistent golfer, <laughs> yeah, yeah. but I can show you what variables are creating that pattern and we can change them. Yeah. Whereas if you go to a golf coach, they're going to be looking at in-depth kind of grip changes, swing changes, mechanical yeah. changes, all these things that are going to take possibly months of work on the range to implement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So do you have that time or do you not have that time? I mean, you know what I mean, like I'm exactly in that position, right? Where trying to start the business, trying to like, do everything in life. And then I'm like, but I want to get better at golf. Like I, when I have my short period of time that I want to go out and play golf with in the weekends or come twilight in the summer, yeah, yeah. I want to go out and play good golf. So, that, but then I'm like, I don't have good time to go to the range to implement these things. Yeah. Um, because I know they're going to take time, right? Like if I go to a coach and pay him money, I don't want to be pointlessly paying him money just yep. to end up. Yep not going to the range, paying him again three weeks later, to having the same not practiced thing. in between yeah. and him telling me the same thing. And, and that's exactly the point, right? So many coaches just keep taking the money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, that's a bad thing, fair, like, because you're going, you're not putting in the work and they go back and you say, how many times have you actually practiced? Yeah, how, yeah, how many yeah. hours have you put in? Not many. Go back and do it again. Like, yeah, this is yeah, what yeah. we're working on, right? Keep keep going. Um, we're not alienating golf coaches, just practice more, right? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah, and like, like I said, it's like your golf coach is trying to help you, but ultimately you have to put in the work. There's no such thing as a quick fix in golf. No. Like, it's uh, very rare anyway. <laughs> well, I think that's why it's such a good game, right? Like, yeah. you can't just go out and be good at it. Like, no. It's just, no. I've never, never met anyone that's just turned up one day and then all of a sudden been good at golf. No. There's always... It's definitely some people that are more naturally gifted. Yeah, yeah. But even then, like the game is just a struggle in it. I think that's, all right, we'll probably move it a bit more now into like the game of golf and your, the love or dis, dislike of the, <laughs> yeah. the golf. Um, but the love of golf for me is that you never complete it, right? Like there yeah. is, I mean, it's, it's physically impossible to shoot a hole in one every, yeah. every round, right? Like yeah. in snooker, you can have a one, four, seven and, it's the best that you could possibly do, right? You yeah. complete you complete snooker at that stage. Yeah, um, <laughs> you've probably completed it. Yeah, <laughs> um, a bit like Jay off the in between has completed it, mate. Um, <laughs> but like golf, you just can't, right? Like you could go round in par or like for a good golf but then they're all yeah. I've left a shot out there. Yeah, or like I, I could go round and shoot like eleven over off my handicap and feel I've done amazing. But then I kick yeah. myself that I've had a double bogey on one of the holes. Like yeah, yeah. But it's always amazing to me, that feeling. <laughs> 100%. And again, it is, everyone always says to me, I just want to get to 18. I yeah, just want to yeah. get to 12. I just want to get to eight. I'm like, no, you don't. Yeah, because yeah, as yeah. soon as you're off 12, you're then a better golfer and you want to get to eight. Yeah. As soon as you're off eight, you're a better golfer and you know you can play to five. Yeah, and yeah, then you yeah. want to get to five. Like, you will never be happy in this game. You'll never be happy. And that's why it's so good, right? And yeah. why there is so much equipment as well that you guys can supply because you get to 18, you want better clubs than what you had at 25 because you yeah. want to try and get down to that. Yeah, twelve or whatever the next elusive mark that you're going for is, right? Hundred percent, hundred percent. I guess on on equipment, right? Do you find that like one piece would, like, say a more single figure handicappers are playing with similar clubs than a same like and same for twenty five handicappers, right? They've all got similar clubs, or could it be completely different depending Complete, on yeah. person? Yeah, I think this for me, I don't look at it in in terms of handicap. Yeah, okay, like hardly at all. 
won't get too much into kind of online reviewers. Yeah. Um, but yeah, for me, there's definitely a kind of place in the market that's lacking. So yeah. obviously you have your higher handicap kind of game improvement irons, yeah, which yeah. are always very strong in loft, right? Yeah. So that needs a specific type of delivery. Yes, a lot of amateurs do kind of hit that high right and slice and deliver too much loft. So for that kind of that player, it's good. But there's also a lot of higher handicappers that will have a really strong grip yeah. and take off loads of loft. Well, then that iron is horrendous for yeah, that player, sure, right? Yeah. But then there's no irons that are really traditionally lofted that are kind of a bit bigger and a, a little bit more helpful. Yeah, yeah. So like there needs to be a little bit of a reverse at some point, I think. We need a more traditionally lofted club that is helpful. And yeah. vice versa. There's a lot of good players that kind of are a bit scoopy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then I'm like, here's this big, chunky, stronger lofted iron because you deliver too much loft at impact. That's going to create a better ball flight for you. And they're like, oh, I'm not in that. Yeah, I was going to say, do they instantly turn yeah. it up, right? It, it's getting a bit better because yeah. I'm pretty laid back, right? You're like, you're paying me for my advice. I'll show you those numbers. You play what you yeah, want. Yeah, you can only advise so much. Yeah, so yeah, like yeah, yeah. if you want to play a blade that's going to go literally up in the air and lose you 30 yards of carry, <laughs> or you can have something that doesn't look as nice, but actually still gets a nice peak, gets a nice angle of descent and gives you an extra 20, 30 yards. Do you, do you know what I mean? There you go. You pick what you want. <laughs> it goes back to that placebo, right? Like someone thinking that something's going to do better for them. Yep. In their mind, despite them paying you money to advise otherwise. or Yeah try and advise correctly and it's only that person feels comfortable with it that they yep. then I guess want to yeah, go down it, that path. It, there is a lot of a lot of that in golf isn't there that, that what does it look like it, it does matter yeah yeah but then the numbers also matter like yeah it comes back to balls as well people are like I can't play a hard ball I'm like well that'd be way better for you because yeah, you, yeah, yeah. you, know, you get a bit more ball speed you get more spin all those kind of things and like I can't can't do it I'm like it's fine it's cool Keep on um, <laughs> I've recently moved away from any kind of premium branded ball yeah. um, and gone to a, not an unbranded ball, but a different ball, which I don't know if you're going to guess, but I'm going to allow you the opportunity to try and guess what ball it is. Not uh, having known nothing about me as a player, by the way, but yeah, it was just, the first time we met. Yeah. Just within um, the market of golf balls. Was it a DTC direct to consumer or? Yes. Yeah. 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 But not a big one. Not a big one. So I'm going to guess sugar. No, no. I've actually gone with the uh, Costco. Oh, okay. Kirkland golf balls. Yeah, it's quite a big brand though. Still, I know they're not. They're not. Not within not the in golf. golf ball, no, yeah, yeah, not yeah. in golf. Yeah. The, um, the I was playing previously a big branded golf ball, and I was wasting so much money on them because I would just be losing them. Yeah. I mean, not going out and enjoying it. Um, but made the transition and felt for me it's all about feel right i'm not going in and hitting my numbers on a on a monitor so i don't know what the old ball was doing i don't know what the new ball is doing yeah um but for me that was the ball that just felt right yeah and also that placebo effect that i was just talking about they're a pound a ball versus like 455 pound a ball yeah so knowing on the tee that if i was to lose it in the drink my the, rounds not cost me another 20 quid in balls yeah it's yeah. cost me four quid <laughs> yeah um and which again, is probably nightmare fuel to you but um well no like again like i Golf is an expensive game as well. Like yeah, not yeah, everyone yeah. can afford to go and buy Pro V ones, especially if you're losing a few yeah, every round. Yeah, yeah. Like it's expensive. So hundred percent get that. Um it's just a very interesting market, I guess, the golf ball market, because it's not only numbers. You know, if you've ever read any of my golf spy stuff or the testing those guys do yeah, about yeah. how consistent it is, is it even round? Is the core centered? All that <laughs> yeah, thing you can yeah. create. Like they, they did a test where it was kind of like hitting off a, a robot. And you would just think if you put the same ball, exactly the same swing, yeah, land yeah. exactly the same spot. Like some of them just veered off w offline way more. And you just like that. So many like things on Insta for that recently where they're like yeah. using putting things or like floating it in water, like that kind of testing that you were saying yeah. about. Yeah, it's, it's incredible really. And I guess that is also what you're paying for really. Someone could, Yeah, someone yeah. could probably create a ball equal to a pro one in terms of the materials. Yeah, yeah. Like how well is it made? How consistently is it made? Yeah, That's what yeah, takes yeah. the money, I guess, sure. really. Or anything in life, right? Like, might look the same, but if it's more consistent and more yep. reliable, then you pay for it's it. Actually, it's actually kind of very similar to shots, I guess, really, in a yeah. way, that the process that they go through, the materials that they use are better. Like, if I hit that stock shaft, yeah, and then I hit that Ventus, if I put exactly the same swing on it, hit it exactly in the same spot, 
Like the Venice isn't going to go any further. Yeah. Yeah. But it will just react more consistently throughout the swing. So therefore I'm kind of eliminating one variable. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's all it is. Like after my shouting, I'm going to go further, but yeah. <laughs> it's just more consistent. Which is ultimately what you're always trying to achieve, right? It's just consistency every I'm, time you step up. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> Another funny thing though, isn't it? How many people do you think actually go, I just, I would take 20, 30 yards off if I could hit it straight. Yeah. But, but then, as soon as they see yeah, the yard yeah. is dropping, they're like, oh, it's Get not it. going as far, is it? Yeah. Like, well, yeah, you know. That's... The uh, <laughs> It's like playing with old boys, right? When you go out on the course and you play with your old boys, like they're, you think at the get to the end of the hole, they're like, I've got a five. I'm like, yeah, you did, but you hit it like a hundred yards less. And they're like, still what to have a five on a par five. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, yeah, no, it doesn't matter. Like yeah. if anything, sometimes I think that's better. Yeah. So everyone goes, you hit the ball miles. I'm like, yeah, I did it 320, 330, but... Like the margin for error there is yeah, so yeah, slim. Yeah. If you're patting it down there, 180, 200, you're generally not getting in that much trouble. Yeah, yeah. Whereas if we're having a bad day, the driver's just getting a lot of threes off the tee. <laughs> a lot of threes. Yeah, yeah. There was, um, I saw something earlier on today on uh, Instagram of a guy uh, hitting a driver. It was like 60% of the time. It works every time. Yeah. Like classic anchor man quote. Just, yeah. just get after it. But it's, Oh, it's just the wrong way to play, right? But you can't help it when you get on the tee sometimes and you just want to get after it. 100%. And that, we get touching on like the golfing journey. I guess like I took that route in terms of I could never really control my nerves very well. Yeah. So I kind of got to a point quite quickly. I was like, look, I'm not going to be a pro. I'm just going to enjoy golf. Yeah, yeah. Whatever I shoot, I shoot. So my concept was always, I'm going to smash driver. Yeah. <laughs> and just accept that I'm probably going to lose a few balls. Maybe not shoot quite as well as I would have, but just enjoy it and have fun. That's what you want to yeah. do, right? Yeah. It's, well, it is. Yeah. When it's a, when it's a hobby, if you're playing for money fair play like you yeah, need yeah, to yeah. properly plan and you need to know what you're doing but yeah if it's if it's, it's just fun it's fun right it's a hobby we should be enjoying it well i, I similarly and i never thought even golf pro was a, an option but yeah like what five years ago just kind of accepted that golf was like a way of life for me like that's and hence where life podcast but the like it's just you go out you have fun with mates for four hours they might be absolutely terrible right but yep. you were like going around walking with them yeah and then you could go out with them with a mate that hits 330 yard drives yeah and you get the owen wilson wows from the back of the team yeah. wow <laughs> um but like all of that is accepted right and then yeah. there's very few people that i've met that you go out and play with that are like oh my god this guy's terrible at golf like I you just want to go out and enjoy I it think every golfer accepts that golf is just bloody hard yeah <laughs> do you know what i mean hard, yeah. so like that is it you're going to play with people who aren't that good like and even if you can come to an environment like this or on a range and hit the ball semi okay even out on course it's like a different kettle of fish yeah, yeah. Like, it's completely different it's like just then if you ever remember like the first few times you played just getting round was like Jeez, uh, it was, it was a co an accomplishment yeah like <laughs> mentally beaten up could you carry yeah. enough golf balls in your bag yeah yeah, yeah 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 just topping everything like miss air shots like you think you get to a point on the range where you're like oh, I'm, i can okay now I can yeah, hit the ball okay yeah, yeah, yeah. Down course you're like oh my days this is just it's insane this game the it's, um you just cut like for situations that you get in right there's so many different variables on a course yeah like obviously you'll come out here and again and i guess it would be a great to understand like when you fit for that right if someone's playing like a hilly course more so or an undulating course more than like a flat parkland course like is that something that you can take in when you club fit that they might have a bit more of undulation so they want something or is it just they're going to have to learn to play a shot and then that's when the coaching side of yeah. it comes in more than the fitting side of it. Yeah, so that that's definitely more of the coaching side because there's no specific lie that you're going to have kind yeah. of like feet above, feet below, downhill, uphill. Like, yeah, yeah. You know I mean, there's, I mean, if it's if you play somewhere that's consistently open and windy, yeah. that's obviously something you probably take into account. Do you really want to get the launch and spin down a little bit to keep that yeah, ball okay. under control? But yeah, as for like lies and stuff, it's quite difficult really. Yeah. Um, that sort of stuff's coaching I'd say mainly and that's why I, I don't hate the range but I just like the range because mm. you could be on a tee box that's angling you one way and you're aiming a completely different direction yeah and like you can't teach that the range because the range is always pointing you straight yeah yeah or the tee box I mean if you go into a pay to play it could be an undulating tee box like, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. You just it's like, like rough you're like yeah. what's this <laughs> there's only tee I mean it's 20 grid you're happy right you move on <laughs> and I uh, hope there's a few beers in the bag but yeah um, yeah, like range, you just can't teach that, right? So you like perfect lie every time, like yep. new yep. ball, like clean ball as well, right? That's just hopefully come out of a washer and onto the onto the tee that you're working with. And I like, then I get on course, balls below my feet. I'm like, 
yeah how in practice how, yeah, how, yeah how do i do how do i now adapt to this it is yeah those sort of things are difficult to be fair but so mostly around here they're reasonably flat yeah just, around like, here, you're all right not bad the um but i think people also beat themselves up more for that right so some of the boys might run up to the range like handicappers think oh, i'm getting all right at the range yeah get on course don't realize that the ball might be a couple of inches below their feet shoots off right and then like, oh, i felt all right at that one yeah 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 yeah. and again that's just a golfing journey that you go on right so yeah i mean it's people beat himself up in general way too much yeah, yeah. when you look at the stats of like pga tour players and, and i'm fitting someone in here and they're like i never hit this many offline I'm like yeah but how many times you hit 80 drives in a row yeah yeah and actually pay attention to where they're <laughs> going on the driving range like you just don't do you no, like, no. <laughs> in here it's very easy um as a pressed environment as well um but no, you're completely right. So coming back to that, are you the kind of golfer that say you're out on course, you kind of like pick a target, visualize a shot, all those kind of things or not? Yeah, I, w I am now. Previously though, I would just be more worried about my swing. And I think that goes back to like that piece where I was saying like five years ago, like just like going to enjoy it more. And then when I like relax and enjoy it more, like I hate a comp golf. Yeah. Um, because yeah. I would just never enjoy it. Like yeah. most of the time stone last like DNFs. Cause I just picked up after the night because I lost three balls off the tee kind of job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hated it. Um, but now like, yeah, I'll pick a, pick a point in the distance and I work back like a little ball point in front of the ball and try and hit it to that. Yeah. But then even then, like I do that and someone's like, your club face is massively open. You idiot. What are you doing? <laughs> and I'm like, oh yeah, thanks. Brilliant. So now I know like for the last eight yeah. holes, I've been hitting it even massively. Even little simple things like that. Honestly, yeah. like if you're used to seeing that, I see in it all the time. Someone will have their face and it would just be like pointing up to the right. And like, I'm like, do you realize you set up like you're trying to play a flop shot? <laughs> you know, a bit like, no, what are you talking about? Yeah, yeah. I'm like, no wonder you hit it high, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Simple things like that. But I think that type of golfer, I'm the opposite. I always was, I would do what you said. I'd pick a spot. Yeah. That'd be it. Like, I'd get my line, pick my shot, wouldn't look up, which I know. I think a lot of people say would, would be bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of coaches, I think, would say that's bad nowadays. But in my opinion, if I just pick my target line, I know what shot I'm trying to hit. If I execute that swing, it should do what I want, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, theory, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> hopefully. Um, I, I don't know. It's never the sort of, and I think that sort of golfer, I do really well in indoor environments like this. Yeah. An indoor sim doesn't bother me because I look at the ball, I know I'm aiming and I swing. I get like a lot of people that just maybe have an off day and it's an excuse, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, well, I can't hit indoors. Yeah. I just can't. There's no target. I don't know where I'm aiming. Like, I guess two different types of golfers. And I used to blame the mats at the, the golf club I went to on the <laughs> range. It was always the mats fault while I was hitting it bad that day, which I think was a, a very way, low way to stoop. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And off mats, like you can tell a lot of people practice off range mats when they come in here or if they practice off a range mat. Yeah. So I'll be hitting it a little fat. And off this sort of turf, if you hit a little fat, the spin will drop a lot. Okay. And I'll be like, this goes mild. And I'm like, that was fat. Sorry. So and why you, is that different? The I'm pointing at the fitting over there. So how is that different to a range mat then? Just pile pile height. So obviously uh, range mat's like really, really small pile yeah, like yeah, turf. Yeah. And then you basically just got foam. Whereas that's like 25 mil pile. So like it does actually grab if you hit fat. Yeah, it, yeah, like yeah. You will generally feel it and stuff like that. Well, most people will feel yeah, it. Yeah, Some yeah. people can't. I hope so. <laughs> yeah. And that's part of it, just explaining. Sometimes it's a bit hard as well because you have to keep saying, sorry, that was, that was fat. Yeah, and they're yeah, like, yeah. you sure? I'm like, yeah, that, that was fat. <laughs> you, can, oh, well, you can tell most of the time, right, just by the noise that comes out of the... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But if, Again, it comes by skill level. You know, if you're a 28, 30 and a capper, most of them can't And you've not hit many sometimes. balls, right? Yeah. Well, like, like, yeah, not a criticism. It's just facts. It's yeah, experience, yeah, yeah. isn't it? Well, yeah, exactly. Like, just getting used to it, being out on a course and just enjoying it and... Yeah. Trying to get a handicap down and learning things like that. Yeah. Like yeah. You could, like you say, put a different shaft in, right? But if someone is just fatting it, then whatever shaft they're kind of, yeah, it's always going to be a, yeah, not as good a result as it could be. 100%. 100%. And I, I almost think with fitting nowadays, with it being in this world, yeah. obviously pointing behind me to all the hundreds of shafts. Yeah. Mental amount. Um, it's people kind of sometimes, I think, look for it to be a problem do you know what i mean what so they can solve it so they can go and like get something to make a solution sorry or what no i think people sometimes blame the bad golf on the equipment when it's just a crap swing right i was meaning more. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> because there are so many options people 
then go, oh, it must be, it must be the equipment, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I think that's why then you go back to the coaching point, right? Yeah. So someone's like, and how easy is it to say it's the equipment rather than go and commit to that time? Exactly. hundred percent. So much easier. And then you have to be careful who you go and see, which is again, another reason that we kind of started up. I'm probably too honest yeah, from yeah, a business yeah. perspective, really. But you need to be able to trust a fitter, I think, yeah. and a coach, obviously. But I can sell you a lot of money's worth of stuff. Yeah, sure. And if uh, if you if you don't kind of know what you're talking about, you've got to trust me. Yeah. So you need to trust I'm going to do the right thing and say, look, you just need to work on your swing, mate. Like it's yeah, like yeah. if I sell you a grand set of clubs, same prob- result. <laughs> yeah, it's probably not going to do much right now. Yeah. You need to go work on your swing. So, and that's another thing. Like I don't know. A lot of other places but i'm sure there are a lot of places that will do the right thing i'm sure there's a lot of places that won't do the right thing like <laughs> yeah well i mean you want that trust right and that's why if you go and you say actually like right now not the best time to get a brand new set of clubs but come back in after you've done this slight like, yeah change yeah then someone's probably gonna be like yeah i'll keep coming back time and time again right which is hopefully exactly that, your yeah. business that what you get is repeat custom because you've sorted them out that's it. Yeah, hopefully. And it's just um, a slightly unfortunate that people don't buy clubs as often as they get lessons, but yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not it's not very repeatable, especially with equipment getting better nowadays. Like, and that's another challenge. And it's just the refresh rate on how many times people buy clubs, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like, and people will come in with equipment and if it's been decently well fitted, yeah, yeah. or they got a bit lucky over the last few years, I'm like, mm, do you know what? It, it might be a little bit better, but with it being so expensive nowadays as well, I'm a bit like, well, it's it's a lot of money to spend yeah, and yeah, it's yeah. better, but it's then down to you to decide if it's enough better to part with the cash. Like, oh yeah. I think some, especially with drivers, right? People want that new head cover in the bag. Like yeah, it's huge to have like the latest, whatever brand of driver. Yeah. And that's why they come out with them year after year. But yeah, I think there's an old, old uh, driver that's I see in a lot of people's bags that are just, hasn't like come along enough for people to replace it yep um and i won't say it because i don't know about trademarks and copyrights and all that jazz but i'll tell you after but uh, um <laughs> can't tease the people like that yeah yeah sure be all right. <laughs> the, uh, you, well you can guess right guess on what bloody driver it is but um yeah like people just say i can't get the same numbers with it yeah like and obviously manufacturers are trying to push people to refresh which is yeah but most it, people do need to refresh right if they've got a late or they've got bad fitting or their swings change and they do need to go and refresh the fitting would be the biggest thing i'd say yeah like the biggest thing by a long way like equipment over the last few years is, is really good yeah you know, if you've got a, a driver that's two three four years old they're good yeah. like i think the newest ones are better but the problem is again we come back to like the whole distance versus hitting it straight yeah 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 they're not really longer unless you get properly fit like if you need the right launch conditions backspin is always going to get you way more or way less distance than ball speed yeah because ball speed hasn't they've not been able to make them faster for years well i guess that's why um good old bryson went on that journey of getting big right because if it's not the technology it's just the person that it comes down to right rather than 100 percent, yeah and i mean i do think they are like this year's drivers are really good like, I haven't hit any, so I have no idea. We'll have a, we'll have a go. Yeah. Um, they're really, really good. And I'm not saying that they're faster than the previous years. Yeah. But I definitely think some of them are more stable. Not all of them. There's a few really good ones that are just, I mean, you hit a crap shot, you're like, wow, I nearly missed that. Yeah. And it still goes a decent distance. It's pretty straight. Yeah, I need one I of them. I didn't feel that bad. Yeah. But again, a lot of that comes down to face to path as well. If you yeah. deliver a decent face to path and when people say, I just want to hit it straight. I'm like, well, that's great. And obviously we can try and remove one bias from, from the side. We can give you a slightly more draw bias, a slightly more fade bias club, and we can protect against one side. But if you're hitting it left, right, left, right, left, right, then it's just <laughs> it's your swing mate. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I could give you something that's going to spin loads more and stabilize the ball flight and lose your distance. But ultimately if you're delivering a face to path, that's way off. It does make, not make any difference. Yeah, yeah, you ain't yeah. going to hit it straighter. It's not going anywhere. Like, like yeah. it's just swing. Um, but yeah, it will be it will be very interesting to see how the equipment develops. I think in the coming years, because the tech's great, the tech stories are great, but is it like enough? If you've got a decent driver, someone walks in with a Sim Two, yeah, and I'll it's well fit it, yeah. for them, you're not getting any more. You see it like occasionally from certain tour pros, right, where they've still got like a ten year old bag in their club, like not often driver, but like ten year old bag in their club. Oh, the other way around. <laughs> 
the uh, that'd be impressive. It would be very impressive. <laughs> they probably would replace it every week. The band. But like a five wood that's like yeah five years old, or like I yeah. think Kevin Nas got some Apex irons that are like yeah seven years old that and they just Patrick's got the old old ping irons yeah. like just Denton really old three wood. Like there's always some someone with something, isn't there? And again, um, it probably comes back to that placebo effect, right? Like yeah. Because if te- technology for them, they're at the cutting edge of the game, and yep. you think it would, where you're going to see it most is at that zero point zero one percent that these yep. players fall into. It's got to then be just mental ability with with the club that they feel comfortable with. 100%. Right? They, they need a reason to change, though. Yeah, like, they're not just going to change. Like some amateurs, we will just change because it's something new. Right? Yeah, it's yeah. nice. It's fresh, exciting. It's their living. Yeah. So if they're saying this is my club, I love it. It does exactly what I want it to do show me something better. Yeah, yeah. If you can't, stay in the back. Yeah, right? yeah. It's as simple as that. I'd love to know the contract worth of like a club for like a PJ Pro, right? Like how much like... Well, how much they get paid. How much they get paid to represent certain clubs, right? Because you've got all these like big TV commercials that go on, right? Where they appear in like somewhere in nice in Florida and they're yeah. in the new X, Y, and Z drivers and... Yeah, and yeah. Like, and they change it every year, right? So for that reason, like they must some years they must not feel comfortable with those new drivers or those new designs that come out guess i think it obviously there's a lot of contractual kind of well, that's what clauses I mean, like, those like monies right um and i don't know how often they get re- renegotiated but i'm sure that you know like mackerel every year he pretty much changes his stuff yeah, yeah, right yeah. but he's like a poster boy yeah exactly so it will be in his contract you're changing but like, just, I'd like to know the money. Oh, a million. Well, some of the macro, millions and millions. Yeah. yeah. When he went, did he leave Nike when he, when Nike was still producing clubs or did he leave Nike because Nike stopped producing clubs? It's I a good can't question. the timing. It was a while. That was a, that was a long time ago. It was ago a long time now, ago. Yeah. But like that big square driver that I think yeah, he won his yeah. first. Yeah. It's horrendous, isn't it? First oh. tournament with or first major with was, yeah, horrendous. Just, yeah, you put on him down now, he's like, that is minging. It's absolutely I mean, minging. There's some Nike putters going on eBay for like 500 quid. Yeah. Like people just love the feel of like this Nike putter. Like yeah. 500 pounds for something that probably cost 150 at the Back in the day, yeah. 10 years ago when they started yeah. making them or whatever. But yeah, again. It's cooler when you can't get it anymore, that's why, yeah, isn't it? Well, like it's exactly, done. Yeah. So it's like limited edition now. So And I think you've got some like Scotty Camerons of like tens of thousands going. Yeah. Which yeah, is Scotty's. Just, Scotty's would always be mad when they're yeah, like. Limited edition run on them, yeah. You laugh and make the investment. Yeah. <laughs> um, so now just some more kind of like golfing questions, right? What got you into golf? Like what was, was it dad taking down a range? Was it a mate? Well, what yeah, kind just of mates. There? I think there was a few of us that just, I don't know if there was one person in the group that kind of did golf. I don't think so. I think. Did golf. <laughs> that, Golfers did. did <laughs> that did golf. Tried to golf. Yeah. Um, I don't think there was. I think it was just me and a few mates decided to go to the range. Yeah, yeah. And that was literally it. Like, um, at that point, or took you a, took you a couple of years to get into. To it, be honest, or? I can't even remember last week. You're probably talking like <laughs> almost twenty years ago yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think I first went to range, and I was like eleven or twelve. It's kind of like just going into secondary school. Yeah. Um, and yeah, dad took a few of us down there, and yeah, just liked it yeah, like, yeah i think naturally i was obviously not good but had a natural ability ish to be able to swing the club okay straight away yeah, so yeah. they just yeah just started enjoying it and then got down old sports direct got the old don a drivers yeah, on the go don a drivers, Slazinger drivers, yeah, oh yes yeah, yeah. as i still actually do remember that it's exciting eh um and yeah just yeah got got the bug from there really and yeah just, nice had a couple of couple of years in and out as i think we all do yeah i have to get to a point where you're like this game sucks like yeah. it's not getting any better Throw like the clubs away and yeah. start again. <laughs> have a couple of years out and then come back to it because you're like oh, i really miss playing golf yeah yeah goes around in circles like that for a while it's a cruel mistress the world of golf and it? it does yeah. get to you it, it is like you, sometimes you just you can't and it comes back to time as well if you're not putting in enough time you always get to 11 and you won't really be able to get much further yeah, yeah if you're yeah. playing off single figures and you're playing once a week every a saturday or sunday golf you're doing very well really aren't yeah you? you're like i don't know how you're doing it <laughs> <laughs> yeah some natural, some lying natural probably yeah, li- yeah not putting in enough cards <laughs> got the old pocket ball oh, yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes um but yeah and it's just been yeah i love ever since really and always wanted to work in golf and finally got the chance to do it yeah Yeah, nice we said already the place is great right the um again 
just straight direct question on their favorite course or if you haven't got a favorite course the course you would most like to play this is like a really bad question for me because you've done it no no You're like it's not bothered i suck at travel like i've never traveled anywhere okay fine like i think to be honest i've never really had a lot of money yeah like and i still do not have a lot of money like, <laughs> it's mental that i've even got this because people would look at you and go you're in a business you've got money like no, i literally have no money yeah yeah like, I'm poor. i feel that pain um yeah <laughs> which you know is, it takes a lot of sacrifice to do it um but yeah i i haven't played that many courses really like we were just talking about Woburn, and you're gonna go and play like played there really really nice course um apart from that i, I probably played a lot more when i was young i played yeah, in the yeah. junior team uh, um drayton park where i was a junior member um and we traveled about quite a bit then nice and but that was like years and years ago apart from that i only really played where i was a member of to be yeah, honest yeah, like yeah. during drayton park and then i joined filford heath um where i was a member until quite recently and that's really nice you know like i didn't really travel around much and play much um i think that's one thing that like golf could be better at is like you have home and away fixtures in football and like big team sports have like home and away fixtures and you yeah. have that in golf with like matches between teams right but it's normally within the local vicinity yeah and yeah it's a pre-arranged match and most of the time it's the better players in the club going out right yeah and you see a bit with like crown golf that i think have memberships that allow you to like travel yeah. around but like being able to like go and play at different golf courses is probably a reason why i'm not a member of a golf course at the minute because yeah. i love to see new places yeah yeah um and one thing that we're going to try and do at Koi Golf is bring those experiences to people. No idea how we're going to do it yet. Yep. But like, I love paying a green fee. I love going and just seeing a new place and like, oh, that was amazing. Yeah, just or, experiencing it, yeah. Do you remember the 15th that whatever course it was, have, yeah. when you have a catch up later with a mate? Yeah. Like, And as a junior, like I think it's quite good because people do travel, like you say, a bit more and parents yep. are willing to probably travel around and, and money's not really as much of an object is it yeah. well depending on parent situation obviously but we don't have to worry about that which is yeah. great but when you get older and you got membership to pay and bills to pay like golf's expensive yeah golf is expensive and you want to make use of the membership if you do have it as well exactly right? joining this club like it's great you want to invite people there but you also you don't want to well some people are different right some people do just want to go to the same place but i want to be able to like see the yeah different golfing world and i guess one we'll do on this podcast is go and meet people at different places and explore the golfing community but within that is like wanting to play at different places as well yeah um yeah i'm not sure how i'll do it but to be able to travel and see because yeah, you test yourself right like you, and i think the world handicap system is trying to do that with neutralizing handicaps across multiple yep. different courses but before yep. that it was very much your handicap traveled well in inverted commas yep um, yeah, which yeah definitely didn't which didn't for most people because they'd be like a plus one at some place and then they'd shoot a 90 at another place yeah right? yeah so um and if you're not putting in cards now then again it doesn't matter but yeah being able to travel and explore yeah new courses i think is one thing that we want to try and do at koi golf and uh 100 no sure how we'll do it but, but yeah we'll like probably up. st andrews would be my number one like, i'd love to go and just play like after the open yeah yeah just go and just play straight off their their tees and just so it just looks just right it's just the course isn't it like i think if you're a golfer yep i think that you could, you could play you, know, you could say augusta and pebble beach and all these kind of places as well but like yeah just the augusta old course just because it is a bit more exclusive like old course yeah old course is a lottery right it's a raffle and yeah true not a raffle but yeah queue up and whatnot yeah but like augusta's just like you couldn't get on it it's just like, <laughs> yeah like i don't even know how to begin to explain how to get on it because i just don't know right like yeah, it's just yeah. you know you're not getting on it yeah 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 that's true that is true it does look absolutely unreal as well yeah, isn't it? like just some of the coverage this year was unreal like yeah the camera angles like all yeah. the stuff they had going on was amazing i think uh like you were saying you don't get to watch a lot of golf right but some of the no. stuff that sky were doing this year was awesome on it yeah I w i'll try and watch like a lot of the majors and, and stuff like that obviously but yeah kind of pretty much out of touch with the world nowadays yeah, pretty yeah. much spend seven days within these four walls now <laughs> and that's that is pretty much my life yeah people ask me questions i'm like i, I don't know no what's idea what's going on anymore like <laughs> i could tell you what shaft i've got on my yeah, wall but, yeah. uh, <laughs> got this new shaft if you're interested but no idea about world politics so no <laughs> How, don't you don't want to get involved how many um have you like obviously there's so many shafts here right but, uh, have you worked out how many combinations are possible 
not for a while to be fair i've still got loads out the back that i need to build as well i'm just yeah it's just one of those things like building a demo matrix is just really boring yeah okay it's just glue 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 cut glue grip grip cut glue. it's just so boring um <laughs> but oh, i think last time i counted on here like shaft wise i think there was about 420 something Jeez. like that around here yeah um and like I say, probably another 50 or 60 out back that I need to build like iron shafts, which are mainly you know, different lengths and all that yeah, kind yeah. of stuff. Um, and then, yeah, probably the combos now, there would be probably over 5,000, I reckon. Jeez. Yeah. So it's, it's a simple game, right? And even that is like, we over, we have six brands currently and we don't have Ping, we don't have Shrixen. It's like the two big, big names that we don't have. Yeah. But like trying to do a full fit in with like seven, eight brands would be so hard yeah yeah and because generally i'll get most people to hit most heads because i'll be like let's just see if you like the look of anything like the feel of anything because everyone's got their own head within their own kind of you know they've got the high spin the more and quote unquote forgiving ones yeah you know what i mean the lower spin ones um so if you just gel with anything then we can dial it in but it would take so long so yeah, like, yeah, yeah. There's, there's eight drivers like <laughs> by the time you've just done that and then you need to figure out which one you like which one the numbers are best which one best suits you and then go into the shaft left different shaft in it like it's it's a really hard process to be fair, Finn, to do it well. I don't even even want to begin to understand it. I would happily come and down and get a fitting to take that real stress off of my shoulders. We'll definitely do that. We'll definitely do that. But again, it, and that's something that I always wanted to do. Like they're a bit longer our fittings because I want the customer to leave knowing that they are happy with what they've got. Yeah, 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 of course. Because there you will always have the fittings where you go and the guy will very quickly go that's the one for you yeah and you can choose to believe him and it might well be a fact like but are you actually going to leave happy having hit two three four combos yeah yeah probably wow. not yeah especially when you can sit here and know that however many combos are yeah. on the wall if you've yeah. only hit a couple of them you, you yeah. would whether you acknowledge the fact of it but or just subconsciously think about it you're not gonna you exactly. know you've not hit all options available to you so how do you know that's definitely right yeah and, and to be honest placebo. yeah but and fitting also like can be a bit of a minefield to be honest so i guess touching on the side that not a lot of people think about but it actually protects me a little bit more as well because obviously amateur golf is very volatile right yeah, and if you're yeah. fitting higher handicapped golfers and they spend a lot of money on equipment there's there definitely comes as an expectation with that equipment as well yeah, yeah sure yeah i hadn't thought yeah but anyone can go out and have a crap round yeah like yeah. anyone multiple crap rounds you all had phases where you just can't hit anything right yeah. so then all of a sudden you get these new clubs you go out and you you just play it has to go well right it yeah. has to go well if and, you spent money on it yeah. yeah and that might be nothing to do with the clubs yeah that might be perfect for you but you might just be having a completely crap day crap week yeah struggling with your swing whatever if i've given you two options then you go oh, i didn't try that i didn't try what about that shaft oh, i didn't hit that head and you, you, chances are you're going to come back to me. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And, and then that's more, just more of a ball aid that we don't want or need. Right. So even and if neither I. Neither party, right? Yeah. yeah neither yeah. party. Yeah. Um, whereas if I go, let's test light, let's test heavy, let's test soft, let's test stiff, let's test seven different heads. Right. Yeah. This is why this is better than this. I'll show you on, on the monitor. Then you leave going, Do you know, what? I tested bloody everything, saw all the numbers, left no stone unturned. If you go and play crap, then chances are you're probably going to go. You've just had a bad round. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Fair enough. Like it's probably me. Like the, um, and one thing I thought within that as well is we like to talk as golfers, right? So, oh, I did try that shaft. Yeah. Oh yeah. It just didn't quite do it for me. Or yep. like, oh, and you see someone else has got that shaft in there yep. and you're like, oh, I didn't try that shaft. Like you're instantly yeah. like comparing, right? Like yeah. if someone's buying a new driver every year, chances are they want to look good and yep. be seen to be having the driver, right? So if they haven't been able to try a shaft that, yeah, Jimmy and who else is walking on the fairways with them has got them. Yeah, yep. it'd be a bit annoyed. And you can't like there'll never be enough time to to test everything, but of course, you just yeah, want to yeah. test enough of a variety to make sure you you pretty you pretty set, you know. And we talked about it a bit earlier on, but balls, right? You've got a stack of balls down there from different uh, manufacturers. Mm. Um, is and I've heard of it before, never done it. Right, I've said I've picked up a ball off of a big warehouse shop floor, but yeah. Um, would you recommend a ball as well as part of a fitting? Yes, 100%. Yeah. yeah, definitely. I think it was always said to fit ball from the green back. Yeah. I kind of actually start with the irons. Okay, right in the middle. Yeah, well, I think that's where it makes the most difference. And that does depend on your level a little bit. Okay. Because we all know that 
person or people or we like to think right and i'm going to get too 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 nasty here i guess but <laughs> the high handicap that says about kind of green side spin and like oh this gives me more check yeah and i'm like not if you're thinning it through very the- <laughs> unlikely that for the most part yeah you might hit a few but it's very unlikely for the most part that you're flying it in two two bounce check in kind of like most even single figure golfers don't don't do that yeah yeah like so I've seen you, it a few you, times on the TV, but that's about it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's very rare that you see it around your local course. Yeah. So you playing that ball for greenside spin is probably mostly nonsense. And the most people come up short, yeah. right? So even if you were getting that more spin, actually it's probably hindering you, not helping you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? If you're like scratch plus figure, maybe a little bit different. But for most average golfers, like starting with irons, where let's say I get a um, Mizuno Tour RBX and then something like an uh, tightest AVX, like for me with a seven iron, there probably would be roughly two to 3000 revs of difference between those two balls. And, uh, cause I have no idea what that would mean as an end result. Please explain. <laughs> so spin can create, it creates lift, which is its pri- primary kind of, yeah. um, job really, but also stability. Okay. So spin creates the ball flight really. So if you're someone who launches it quite low, we need that backspin. We want that backspin to create kind of that, you know, when then people talk about, it's quite hard on a podcast. You're trying to explain because people can't see what yeah, you're doing yeah, with your yeah, hands. Yeah. Um, so when, they, when people talk about that, the but... <laughs> people talk about that tour profile like, that launches low and kind of climbs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's obviously the spin that's doing that. So if you launch the ball low, we want spin because we want it to climb. That creates height. That creates kind of a nice steep descent angle, which gives you your stopping power. So if you you're, if you launch it low and you're playing a really really low spin ball, yeah, it just creates this low hot ball fly which will go miles yeah, yeah but it won't climb it won't be stable it'd be fast it'll be low just it's not a nice ball flight yeah, really. yeah so something like having more spin can just create more of a flight keep it in the air a bit longer make it climb a bit higher stop a bit quicker all those kind of things so it can make a big difference you're like literally making me spend money as i sit here right like <laughs> new driver new ball uh I'll probably find something else when we get, pack up and get on the way out. It's in my grips. They're quite good. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> Definitely need a re-gripping on some of my clubs. Yeah. The, um, uh, but yes, one definitely. of the most important questions as well, I think of, and you haven't played in a while, so this could have changed over time. Yeah. But, um, the go-to halfway hut snack. I have only ever played at like one place. It's got a halfway hut. What? I know. You need to get out more. Like that's probably why I go out and golf for half really? a half snacks. Yeah. Like I literally don't have a life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Honestly, I don't like even before because I mean, coming back to the sort of origin stories of this, when I decided I wanted to club fit. Yeah. Again, it was like a big sacrifice. I had to do a lot of traveling. Sure. Take a big pay cut for years. And I just, again, I've had no money for like years. Yeah, yeah. Just put all of my time and money and effort into, into Making this. this place that yeah. is awesome, right? So if you come back and ask me in like 10 years, hopefully, yeah, yeah. hopefully I'll have an answer for you when I've actually played some golf. <laughs> yeah, I'll, uh, I'll make sure I add it to the list then. <laughs> yeah. um, but no, generally like sausage roll, coffee. Yeah. <laughs> I won't take mine. I'll save mine for another time. <laughs> the, uh, I don't think i've got any more questions i don't even know how long we've been talking it's been a while it's been, what time will we check what time it is two. quarter to three yeah that's cool that's cool so i think we're gonna wrap it thanks everyone for listening to this week's episode of a way of life and a quick reminder to sign up to koi golf's mailing list go to koi to sign up for the latest information and to find out when the brand's launching